Alrighty. We got ourselves a microgrid down under case for us to deal with. This is from PV Magazine Smooth Operators Australian Designed ESS Spells Grid Independence for the 24 to 60 kilowatt hour end of yeah, that's uh, your daily living range, basically. <clears throat> My household, we were somewhere around there. At least I, I think I got that right. If not, old yeller's got to be put down. We put together the best components to make a unique Australian design solution that is compliant to the new battery standard, says EVO Powers. Jamie Allen, off-grid or upmarket, just add solar. So it's basically a more robust, it's a more robust battery that you can take home. Ba well, here, here, here we go. Let's, let's, let's read what they have to say here. Home batteries may still be a big ticket item, but choices are emerging in the in greater zone <clears throat> that will make sense for different users broadening the market for rooftop solar as they go EVO power is a new player in the solar energy storage sphere offering turn creek key 24 kilowatt to 60 kilowatt hour AC coupled solutions that combine LG chem lithium ion battery modules with Australian Australian manufactured selectronic inverters and Newcastle developed switched in droplet controllers. All of these are connected to the flangle. I have no idea. I just made the flangle up. At that size, the EVO power offering is intended to go off grid, keeping farmhouses and agricultural processes turning in areas where there is no connection or the grid is unreliable. Commercial operations are also an EVO power site, Jamie Allen, the company's managing director, told PV Magazine. Commercial customers may have a 30 kilowatt or 100 kilowatt solar array up on their shed or warehouse roof and are now interested in adding batteries to reduce peak demand tariffs and provide backup power for some circuits that power their fridges or other critical appliances. Future proofing every energy consumer. So Allen launched EVO Power's first ESS range prime this month, but has been designing and testing the integrated package over the past year. Okay, so he was previously a general manager for LG Chem in the Asia Pacific region, and this is what he looks like. Jamie Allen, managing director of EVO Power, says, with switched in, we can remotely monitor and provide remote programming and I can't do an Australian accent, Mike. And control our prime systems and provide a pathway for customers to participate in the in energy market. That's not a knife. That's a knife. All right. <clears throat> You're just horrible. Alan and his business partner saw an opening for high quality, reliable, integrated systems that could go off grid, but which also prepared owners for participation in virtual power plants. Virtual power plants. You're going to be able to. Uh, yeah. When we get, uh, th th this is, this is one of the key areas in life that uh, those who seek to continue to sustain a market competitive advantage over the vast, 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 vast majority of us, they're interested in developing technologies that offer some degree of sustainability, self-sustainability, local sustainability, but only sustainability that is tied still in a way in which it is still fundamentally dependent upon the centralized system for its dependence. It's, it's, it's the, the sustainability parts are intended to lower the cost for the central planners. And you'll benefit to some degree from the sustainability, but on the main, it's not intended to give you the opportunity to fully be sustainable and to set the course of the direction of your own communities, your own individual little castles and your own communities. 
doesn't really want you to do that. In this instance, this is a tool. If you develop a practical methodology by which human beings can store significant uh, amounts of energy in a practical container that is not hazardous whatever methodology they use to get the power in it doesn't matter they get the power in and when you have the capacity to be able to sustain yourself does you know all, all you need is a freaking battery you can you can get it with the wind with the solar bootleg into the system or legit get from the system whatever it is you can build up your freaking power and you can have that 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 long sustainable cushion that's what we need as humans what we all lack so much you know and they don't want us to have that because if we had that we wouldn't show up for the crappy lives that they have selected for the vast majority of us who would show up to work every day if they really did have the capacity to like if they knew listen i got like three years worth of energy and the type and and i could sustain myself with my own food because i've got aquaponic i got all the i've got the power to sustain all the other parts that i can sustain myself i've got my own water i got my uh own power i've got methodology to grow m my own food if, even if my food is not to the widest range of my liking i can still fundamentally grow on the ground around me and from the house within and on the terraced you know i envision well i envision kind of castle well they're not literally castles i'm calling them castles metaphorically they don't need to look like castles but these are five-story structures that are designed for like maybe two or three families live in them and uh, they have they have uh they have they have garden uh or or greenhouse on top or garden whatever rooftops uh terraced all the way up to the top to the fifth story and then it's tended to be a secure place it's tended to make you feel secure and to let everybody know you know you probably shouldn't be looking trying to mess with those folks too often especially if there's like a whole community of homes like that that's my vision but they're they're, uh, they're looking to take a concept like a microgrid for instance microgrid it's a uh, let's just see what the, what uh, what their their top uh, definition here is uh, here a microgrid is a decentralized group of electricity sources and loads that normally operates connected to and synchronous with traditional wide area synchronous grids macrogrids now they say traditionally now that's interesting microgrids did not emerge at all in this connection at all microgrids emerge well, I don't know exactly where they initially emerged. In a sense, people have been creating microgrids without them being called microgrids. But in Africa is where a lot of these microgrids really have been honed in, in battle. Where a lot of communities now have the capacity to create this storable power using multiple energy resources. It's not so much important the energy resources as much indigenous resources as possible you want to put into it. And if you have to get outside, okay, you have to get outside. But maximally, you'd like to be self-sustaining, but they don't want that. That's why they say this. Synchronous with the traditional wide area synchronous grid, macro grid. And then let's listen to this. Let's listen to this. Just give you a little taste here. This is from MATLAB. I don't know anything about MATLAB. I'm not even a subscriber, although I will subscribe to them now. There I subbed. There you go. So this is MATLAB. What are micro grids? It's just a... A minute from this uh what first uh this is this guy's dealing with people that are actually getting into this field introduction to microgrids microgrid system microgrid system development and analysis part one let's, let's have a listen now if we look at systems that are more distributed like the microgrid they're quite a bit different than you know the traditional utility structure so traditional utility structure we have centralized generation power gets distributed down um, through the distribution network out to consumers. The microgrid concept and other distributed power systems are much more distributed. We have localized generation, be it through the diesel generation systems or other you know, renewable systems. 
And these all have to be coordinated, right? And so that's the job of the microgrid controller. The software that defines and controls these systems is really critical because we're not only just operating independently here, we can connect up to the utility grid as well. And so ultimately what we're going to be working with is a system like this. So this is an industrial control system. This is a PLC specifically, but these are the things that are actually going to be controlling the grids out into the field. Uh, and then he goes off and he'll be dealing with folks that are really dealing with that stuff. Now, the important part that he talked about here, there's there's a couple of key points here and underlying theme of a lot of the stories that I cover, IP, intellectual property. It's the colonizer of the mind. And uh, one of the ways that uh, the folks that uh, already have the advantage and wish to keep the advantage and wish to keep these technologies from working against them their best one of their best weapons is to because they have the capacity to offer people the biggest money incentive to be on their team even if the folks are one of us one of the poors if they're brilliant and they can figure crap out they're probably going to end up designing stuff for these citadelians that'll have uh, their ip uh, slapped onto it the citadelians will colonize their mind and there will be just a few two, three main microgrid software programs that people can use and be able to communicate, whatever. But outside of, of their controls, outside of tying these microgrids to utility grids that are controlled by citadelians or whatever, there is the capacity for communities to have within them multiplicities of resources as far as how they get their energy some of the energies is they're working as communities to draw maybe it's a maybe there's a, a part of the community that is particularly high up that is really ideal for putting wind turbines on that get a lot of power to a lot of folks and it's kind of in a place it's not going to annoy me it's perfect it's like okay that's it's tailor-made for that or whether it's solar or something but in general everybody is, is trying to get as close as possible to being self-sustaining within their castle community of, of energy uh, and having the capacity for all of these communities to be energy connected to one another, not in an interdependent way, but in an inter-reliant uh, way, uh, uh, well, mu mutual assurance way. It's, it's not about being dependent upon this network it's about having a network that wherever any individuals or whatever within our communities or if we have large-scale needs wherever there are issues that all of us have the capacity to help one another meet their energy needs if there's some crisis where they suddenly don't have it so it's a backup and then the surplus energy maybe will sell off to whatever communities are out there this is what could develop this could develop even uh, uh organically in some instances it would have to be kind of clandestine and then when you're ready to announce it to the world you're like what are you going to do about it now what are you going to do about it <laughs> i'd love to see that type of thing but what they would like is something uh, a little bit a little bit different so what they would like is for see that clean spark commission it's software on new microgrid this microgrid is for their new factory located in the san jose uh, now here, this is this is where microgrids really were more talked about. These are really like they're portable systems in which you have a multiplicity of energy resources and you have a central hub to manage all these energy resources and send it to out to the community. So it's like it literally is kind of like a microgrid. But then these microgrids can also talk to other microgrids like your house can be its own microgrid. And that microgrid can be communicated with like a small network of houses like that's one network of microgridding and then that larger network of microgridding is network i mean you can see the uh, you could see the 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 mesh net na nature of the whole affair and and the power but it'll be 10 15 percent of the liberating power it could possibly be if it's in the hands of the citadelians if it's at the hands of the uh, intellectual proprietarians who will, will will create the artificial uh, 
scarcity that they need to create to assure that we show up to our crappy jobs every day, even though at our hearts, probably 80 plus percent of us maybe when we go to work, maybe, maybe less, I don't know, go to work and we're like, yeah, honestly, I, I might rather go to the dentist. And matter of fact, when you have a dentist appointment, not me, not me, I'm terrified of dentists. That's a, but it's a lot, maybe for some many people out there, I'm sure. I mean, I'd rather go to the doctor, and I can't stand going to the doctors. And I would rather go to the doctor, go to work, if I was working the types of job that most people work. So that's the reality. And uh, microgrids in the hands of the open sourcers. In the hands of the open sourcers, do this microgrids provide facilities with the ability to disconnect from the traditional grid? I'll just leave it at that. Screw this during power. I'll just say that traditional grid, traditional grid. And it would, uh, you know, if the traditional grid eventually becomes in, it, it, it is, is, it, is in the hands of, of the actual communities that these grids serve, well, then they, well, great, we'll be connected because those are our grids. But right now, they're not really our, our, our grids. They're Citadelian grids, and that's, that's just the reality. But you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Burn down a bunch of businesses? Wait, people are doing that right now? Are you kidding me? Like, that's actually a negotiating strategy now? Like, that's a political, is that, is that a political campaign ad now? I would like you to uh, notice our uh, campaign department. It's, uh, mm, well, um, they have perfected a new Molotov cocktail that you throw. It's, uh, it's made entirely of ice, so that after you throw it, it melts, and then there's no fingerprints. Ha-ha! <laughs> that's, that's the new Biden campaign uh, research department. And uh, meanwhile, over in Team Trump, over in Team Trump, uh, what we have... Uh, what, what, what we have figured it out is, is how to get ourselves to accidentally fall on our AR-15s and have them go off at just the right time so as to almost blow our heads off but just miss us and knock our hats off so as to provide comic relief. This is our campaign strategy. Fascinating. But that were true. I mean, not really. Not, not the Biden one. Whatever. Anyway. Or we could just uh, open source this stuff and just not need to vote anymore and just find a way for people to find one another that are willing to start to build. There are other micro gritty type uh, meshy technologies out there. Even we're literally talking about mesh networks and a lot of other stories. You keep watching this channel. This is some of the things that we talk about. I think, I think I'm going to leave it at that. You guys... Listen, man, you guys have a great day. Somebody has to.